stay tuned after this to watch the trailer for our new docuseries, Traveling Solo. Hi, I'm Harrison. I'm Brittany. This is Keely. And welcome to our tiny home. So we're starting in the kitchen. Um, our builders are Timbercraft and they have a pretty basic layout that we really fell in love with. The four burner stove, we have an oven. Our vent uh, for our cooking is right here. That's important because our stove and oven run on propane. The fridge is super tall, enough room for all of our hot sauces. Some customizations we were able to do is butcher block countertops. The backsplash here, we picked out a farmhouse sink. We were able to pick out the color of the cabinets. We have plenty of space. We were thinking we were gonna get rid of pots and pans, which I'm really glad we didn't because we have just plenty of room for all of our stuff. A couple other things we added was extra counter space here and here. I don't feel like we had to give anything up. The dishwasher was a nice addition that we were able to add with the length that we did. Um, we did 39 instead of 37. We were back and forth between that length for a while and the dishwasher was the thing that kind of bumped it up for us. The only thing that's kind of tough is the counter space because this is kind of odd here to work with. And so we kind of just have this little spot in this for spreading out and I do a lot of baking. But this space back here is nice. Um, I've got my little KitchenAid. You can kind of tuck stuff back there. Something that was really important to me in my home is being able to decorate it. The space on top of the cabinets made that easy. There is an option in this uh, model that you can put a loft up here, which we decided against, which I'm really glad. I love this big, tall, open space. That leaves me enough room for my decorations. Another upgrade we decided to do was the skylight. So something that we kind of struggled with was where we were going to put the trash can. You know, we didn't want the animals to get into it. Um, so we were able to find this simple human, one that hangs on the back of the door. Um, so it's put away at all times. So our animals aren't getting into it. So this is our living room, which we are really happy about. A lot of times um, this model will have a loft above the living room but we uh, were really back and forth about whether or not we were gonna have one so we can maybe host guests and have extra sleeping space, uh, but ultimately decided that we were gonna skip the loft and we we're so stoked that we did um, because we now have this big open living room that just kind of really makes it feel like the space is much bigger than it is. This model also usually comes with a back door right here, um, but we opted for a big window and that was another good call. I'm pretty happy with that decision. Plus it gives us a little bit more living room space without needing that room for the walkway. It took us a while to find a couch that fits our space as well as this one does. Um, a little hard to nap on um, unless you're a dog. The animals seem to love it as much as we do. The entertainment center, uh, this was something that I kind of planned out and drew up and sent to our builder. And so I had an idea of kind of what kind of things that we were going to place in the entertainment center when I started and designed it around that. For example, uh, I love video games. So I had to get in a special spot for all my consoles. And then um, inside of this drawer and these cabinets are where we keep some of our, our games, our board games, video games, movies. And this is also where our internet connection is. So we had the house wired for internet. Um, that was a must have for me, not just because uh, I play video games with my brothers online, but also because I work remote. So a decent internet connection was very important when designing our, our space and where the router sat was uh, 
really important because they often sit in our in the closet of this model but i wanted it to be closer to where the entertainment center is we have a uh, Space over here for decorations. It's not just all video games for me. And then we also have uh, a space for our records and our record player. Those almost didn't make it when we were doing our downsizing, um, but really happy that we had a space for those. Every so often we'll be uh, watching something that we're really engaged with, but also uh, making dinner. So this mount was really nice to where we can kind of watch while we cook. On weekdays, we spend a decent amount of time in the living room. Uh, after work, we'll uh, take a load off and we'll watch some TV, play some video games, but also we have this table back here that actually folds out. So it creates a pretty decent sized space for board games or building Legos, which is a hobby that I kind of convinced my wife to be a part of. So having this open space, we can kind of utilize it for different things. This is where the food bowl and uh, water bowl goes for Keely. The cat bowls we have to keep separate and feed them separately because they all like to eat each other's food. Downsizing was difficult, but we had been doing it for a long time. So we kind of got to slowly downsize. We knew we wanted to do the tiny house even before we got our deposits in. We were already starting to make those decisions of downsizing. My parents are awesome and we are able to store our important and sentimental things at their houses, but we did get rid of a lot of stuff. I'd say probably got rid of more than we were initially expecting. Mm -hmm. And it turns out we have space for some of that stuff, so maybe over downsized. Yeah. One of the draws of going tiny for us was to kind of not be so encumbered by our personal possessions, um, but you know, we still you know, haven't kicked it entirely. Um, but one of the hardest things that was difficult for me to get rid of was uh, I collect Legos. Um, so I had a pretty big collection back home. Um, those are now in storage bins. Yeah, you didn't get rid of them. No, I could never get rid of them. <laughs> I, I think ultimately, you know, it's it's been exactly what we were hoping. Um, having less space has made us a lot more conscious of what we're purchasing and what we're bringing into our home. Oftentimes we can't get the things that we want and Ultimately, that helps us, you know, understand that we didn't really necessarily need them in the first place. So um, it kind of forced our hand in being more methodical about our purchases. One thing that was really important to me was having a dedicated workspace. So it's now as dedicated as we can be. Right here is where I will set up my standing desk. And um, I have a stool back here, but for the most part, I'm standing here and can work in this space pretty efficiently. Um, so that was that was a concern we had going into the tiny house of how I was going to be set up to kind of get in the zone with my work. There, you know, is some kind of drawbacks to working in the kitchen slash living room. Um, sometimes I'm in meetings and the house has to go a little quiet during the important ones. But for the most part, it works pretty well. So now we are in the entryway hallway. So right when you walk in, we have a pantry. So extra storage for food because in our kitchen cabinets, it's all dishes and pots and pans. And then down here, we've got laundry stuff, pet food, pet supplies. Also in our little hallway entryway, we have room for our shoes and a little shoe rack. And then this big dehumidifier which we need in this Oregon climate, which we learned the hard way. Everything is sweating. Some mold started to grow on our doorway, but this dehumidifier is doing the job and we haven't had a problem since. And then these stairs that lead up to our bathroom, they all have storage in them. These bottom ones are the deepest. We've got pet drawer, some random junk and craft stuff, got cleaning stuff, shoes, hats, but they get smaller as you go up. So this last one is really small. And then yeah, to my right here is the bathroom now. So this is the bathroom. 
For the toilet, we were back and forth about going with composting versus just a standard flush. Um, ultimately decided to go with the flush. Since we are doing the flush, had to install a bidet. Highly recommend for anyone and everyone. This counter came standard, um, but Brittany chose um, the colors in here, uh, which look really nice. The washer dryer is a washer dryer combo. We were a little nervous about how that was gonna work out for us, but it is a vented one, so it actually works pretty well. We were pleasantly surprised. So down here, we have this nook for our litter box. We have a pretty, pretty bulky one um, that also requires power because it's self-cleaning. So uh, we had our builders put in a outlet back there so we can get that going. Also, this model usually has the washer dryer at the floor level and this is just a blank wall. But yeah, we knew we were gonna need that litter box space. So we had them lift up the washer dryer and gave them the dimensions for the area that we wanted and it worked out perfectly. Um, we did lose some closet space by moving up the washer dryer, which we can show you in a bit. We had a medicine cabinet put in here. That's really nice. I would say one of the places that we're um, kind of missing out on a lot of the space that we're used to living in a normal sized house is in the bathroom. So uh, the cabinets can get pretty full, but it seems to be we figured out a system. For the shower, there was a lot of things we could have done, but what we ended up doing was we found a shower that this builder had already put in on a different model and instead of designing one ourselves we just said we love this one that's exactly what we want so if you could just replicate that love the shower love how big it is so we have a fan in here that automatically detects moisture but it also has the option to just be um, in an on state that is really nice um, especially because of all the moisture that these small bathrooms can accumulate so now we're in the bedroom, which is on the gooseneck of the trailer. That was the number one reason we chose this model. We wanted our bedroom to not be in a loft. Um, we wanted to be able to stand up in our bedroom and we wanted to be able to not crawl over each other getting out of bed. So this is nice. We can both walk on each side of our bed. We've got his and hers um, bedside tables with some storage and then our whole bed frame, which um, was built by our builder has storage in it as well for our clothes so we've got three drawers on the bottom and then two drawers on each side so not only does our bed have the drawers um, there's also storage in the middle beneath the mattress we haven't come up with a clever way to get to that quite yet than just pulling the mattress off um, so we definitely just have some stuff in there that we don't need to get to very often <laughs> We've also got a reverse split in here. That is our heating and cooling. It runs on electric. We have another one in the kitchen and with the small space, it works quickly and well. So this is a queen size bed in here. We had to downgrade from our king size, but it's going all right. <laughs> so then we have a closet here that has a sliding door and then what Harrison talked about. We lost some space in here because of the washer. There's a ton of storage back over our bathroom. Um, so we have our luggage back here, um, camping stuff, decorations, Legos. <laughs> and then also there's not enough room for Keely to jump up on the bed with us. So where she sleeps is halfway in the closet, halfway out. Harry calls her our little Harry Potter dog. <laughs> <laughs> We're very thankful that we found Tiny Tranquility. Not only were we first time tiny home dwellers, um, we're also first time home buyers. So it was awesome to have knowledgeable neighbors that helped us out with a lot of stuff. Putting the house up on blocks, getting it up off the tires, that was quite a process. Um, and then just all the ins and outs of having appliances, like we've never had appliances before. We always, you know, rented. So having people in your 
corner who know about tiny living um, is really important. This specific community has a lot of amenities, really cool common area, pool table, ping pong. There is a full-size washer dryer um, that we are on a rotation to use for some of our bigger loads. Everyone at Tiny Tranquility is super friendly. They're always asking, you know, if you want to go to a workout class, everybody kind of pitches in with the garden. You know, people have their workspaces in the shed. Also, it's really nice to have the shed because we can store our bikes in there. And uh, besides all the amenities of the the park itself. One of the biggest benefits of where we chose to live was we are two blocks away from the beach. If it's not raining, we'll go out every day after work and take her to the beach to play and look for agates. <laughs> so this is something that I really wanted, the French windows with the outside bar. This folds up and uh, we plan on having a deck built out here. But the French windows uh, were on back order when our house was getting built. And um, it was kind of something that I was really, really excited about. So it was a little risky. We almost had our date pushed back, but ultimately very happy that we kind of stuck with this idea. It took us a long time to pick out the color scheme that we wanted. Uh, we closed down Home Depot when going through swatches, but love, the decisions that we went with love our roof uh, but this neighborhood has a bunch of birds that will crack peanuts on the roof so sometimes that's a little off-putting but pretty cute something that's really nice is this outdoor storage it goes all the way back got our snowboards in here camping table outdoor chairs biking stuff crabbing stuff some tools. Um, something that's also back here is our water heater, uh, which is tankless, which is really nice, um, although it does run on propane. So the tankless water heater, the, wa the hot water is not supposed to run out, but if you run out of propane, it does run out. And <laughs> we have been in the shower on more than one occasion when we ever <laughs> ran out of hot water. But luckily the, you know, the other one who's not in the shower can go change the propane. That's also why we keep an extra tank on hand for those situations. A benefit we found living in the tiny home is there's not a lot to maintain here. Um, so it gives us more time to get outside all weekend, every weekend. We go to the beach every day. I feel like I'm really more free to leave for longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, since, you know, we don't really have a, a big home that we need to really maintain. So like we will just hit the road and go on a road trip almost on a whim sometimes, mm -hmm. um, just because we don't really feel kind of locked down in our space. Thanks for joining us on our tour. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can reach out to either of us on our Instagram. My handle's hrwalleen. Mine's Brittany, two underscores, Walleen. Reach out if you want to know a little bit more about our home or if you want to play Halo sometime. <laughs> Take care. You can do both. Oh my gosh, did you hear my stomach? <laughs> did that come through? Will you keep that in? <laughs>
I just got sick of the city life. I was tired of every weekend being what's the best brunch spot, let's go to the new bars, and wanted to find a way to get back out in nature. I think there's a lot of fear based around traveling, especially around women solo traveling, but it's really not that scary. In the beginning, the first six months, this whole this whole lifestyle was just adrenaline driven. Everything was new, it was an adventure. I wanted to go everywhere, see everywhere. But there's definitely moments um, where I'm like, where do I go next? I've had to push through a lot of self-doubt and I've had to quiet that inner critic a lot. Whatever problem I'm facing, like somebody else has gotten through this, this is temporary, I can find a way through this. I like to find peace in that sometimes. a lot stronger as an individual, knowing that I can work through things that come up that I maybe didn't think that I could have done before. It's the community really that has helped me to heal a lot of the, the stuff that I set out to heal. I had decided to go to this van meetup, which I haven't done a lot of. It's actually one of the best groups of people that I've met. There are friends and community and a tribe that are just out here to greet you. I get the itch to move now. It's like, okay, on to the next adventure. Here we go. I'm, it's, I'm addicted. I love this lifestyle. I'm a permanent nomad now. I want to look back and be proud of, of who I was and how I interacted with people. I want to be proud of how I treated people, but I also want to be proud of the decisions that I made for myself. I've always gone by Tori my whole life, and on this trip, I, I became Victoria. It almost goes along with like becoming a new, different person out here.